Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. Today we are starting part two of the McCall's 83s, oh boy, 831s, 8361. <laughs> um, sew Along. I've obviously got a picture here for you. I'm awful with those numbers. Um, but today we are going to be tackling the bodice. We are going to get our um, bodices all put together, our collars on, um, the little front little um, bit that connects is, that can, will connect the, the top to the skirt at the end. That little bit's all going to get attached um, and just get all of that um, together. Uh, today is probably going to be a little bit more um, heavy time intensive than next week, but um, yes, we're just going to be doing the bodices today and we'll tackle our skirts next week. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to help with those. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you again next week for part three. Bye. All right. Are we ready to start sewing, guys? I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for um, the first step, we're going to be working on our bodice today. This is going to be um, somewhat involved. I'm going to be following the steps of the pattern somewhat closely. I do tend to go rogue a little bit in a few areas, um, and I'm actually going to put the sleeves in before we do up the side seams. Um, but by the end of today, we will have our bodices put together with the sleeves in, and then next week we'll work on our skirts and then getting those attached and finishing things up. So um, I think we can do this in three weeks from you know last week and then this week and next week. So bear with me. <laughs> All right, so for this first step, we need piece one, which is our front. I've done a full bust adjustment on mine, so my dart is a little bit bigger. I've lengthened this accordingly. Um, you need piece two, whoops, which is our back. We're gonna need that. And then you're also going to need your elastic, your half inch elastic cut to the length of piece three. So that is where we are starting with today. We can put pieces two and three aside. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is sew our darts. And then we're gonna put our gathering stitches here in um, the bottom of our front. So I'm gonna set my piece aside. I have, you know, you wanna make sure that you've marked lots of fuzzies here. Um, make sure that you have marked your um, dart points and all necessary um, notches. I have cut, yeah, I've cut all of my necessary because I'm going to be doing more gathers here at the base of the pattern. I'll just have more because I've added an inch of width here, um, but I want to keep it as normal so I'm not changing the little um, front waist piece at all. I'll just have more gathers in through that area. But my dart is bigger. So I can see that I've got my little dart point. It's kind of getting lost there on the camera. I have my dart point right there in the green. So we're just gonna sew our darts real quick. So let's go over to the machine and I will show you how I do my darts. All right, so I um, have my dart point right here. I'm just going to fold this over on itself. I want to match up my dart legs. At the side, I put a pin right here at that point. And then march, mat, or march, match up my dart legs. I've just cut two notches into the fabric where those start. All right, so now we can see that's where I wanna start and that's where I wanna end. A great way is to take a long piece of thread and then I'm going to lower my presser foot right here at that notch. And I'm gonna take my thread, and I know it's white and hard to see, but I'm taking it and I'm meeting it right here at this pin where my dart point is. Can you kind of see that thread that's right there? And now I'm just going to follow that line of thread. Oops, well. There we go. So now I'm just going. So instead of having to, to draw in my dart legs, just following that line. And then when I get right to that point where I'm like a stitch away from the edge of the fabric, I'm going to stop, lift my presser foot, turn it, and then sew back into the dart, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half and then backstitch there within the dart bulk. 
Well, maybe. There it goes. Okay. So we get real close to that edge right there. And that, um, I think, gives the best, uh, smoothest dart points. Okay. So we have done that. All right. Now, before um, we go and press everything, let's go ahead and do our um, gathering stitches. So you should have a notch here at the bottom of the shirt. You've got this kind of um, scoop here at the side seam. And you should have an, uh, a dot at either end here that need gathering stitches. Um, so I'm just going to increase my stitch length up to five. And the way I like to do this is just I sew down and then I'm, I kind of did that backwards but now I'm going to go one stitch in and then I go back. So I've made basically a three-sided rectangle. Um, I just think that that is easier. Oh, I didn't want to backstitch. Dang it. Well, I'll have to unpick that part. <laughs> but then that just makes it a lot easier to um, pull my threads and to um, do easy gathering, and then you don't accidentally pull it out at the other end. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the other side, um, and then let's go back above, and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so once you've done your gathering um, on the bottom, you're gathering stitches. I had to break that, <laughs> but there's gathering stitches. We'll gather that later, but just go ahead and put those in. Um, we're going to go to the ironing board, and we're going to press our darts down and give those a really good press. And then on our back, so I'll do that on both sides, on our back here um, along the bottom, while you're at your uh, pressing station, go ahead and fold this a quarter of an inch and then five eighths of an inch and give that a really good press. We're making the casing for our elastic. So um, go ahead and yeah, quarter and then five eighths here at the back and then press your darts and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I've pressed up a quarter of an inch and then five eighths of an inch to the wrong side of the back. And I've got my um, darts all nice and pressed on my front. Um, so that is looking good right there. All right, let's set our fronts aside for just a minute. We're gonna work on the back here for just a quick second. I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm going to just edge stitch really close to the fold all the way across the back. Um, and then I'll meet you right back here and we will insert our elastic. All right, now that I've stitched that down, we're gonna insert our elastic. I've cut the elastic. Um, give the elastic a really good stretch before you cut it the length that it needs to be. Um, that just kind of wakes it up a little bit and then it, cause it, it stretches out just a little bit when it's first stretched. So I'm using my very fancy tool of a safety pin here, but we're just gonna start at one end of this casing we just created and start feeding it through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it um, this far end, even with this first side, baste it and sew it inside the seam allowance so that it's um, secured. And then we'll go ahead and pull it through to the other side. Okay, so once my elastic is even with my um, cut edge here on this side, I'm just gonna go and sew over the elastic within the seam allowance, so at like three eighths of an inch is fine, um, to secure that in place. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll finish uh, feeding our casing. All right, so I've got that nice and secured there within the seam allowance. So now we're just gonna finish pushing this through. All right. Now, um, before we stitch it down on this other side, just make sure you did not twist your elastic anywhere. <laughs> I like to give it a good little tug just to make sure everything feels like it should, and I think we're good in there. All right, so you can take off your safety pin or however you're feeding your elastic through. You want this to be even, um, feed it back through a little bit so that it's also even with the side seam. And then we are going to stitch across it really quick um, as well within the seam allowance. And then I'll meet you back here. 
All right, so we've got our back. The elastic is all in there nice and neat. Um, so now we're gonna do our shoulder seams. So we are gonna sew right sides together at 5 eighths of an inch, both of our fronts here. So let's go over to the machine and do that really quick, and uh, then we'll move on. Okay, just gonna sh sew my shoulder seams, 5 eighths of an inch, uh, right sides together here. All right, so I've got my shoulder seams sewn. I'm going to serge those, press them towards the back, and then when we come back, um, we're gonna work on our collar. All right, so we've got our bodice together at the shoulder seams, front and back. Um, we're gonna set this aside for right now, though. So now we're gonna work on our collar and lapel. So this is um, pieces four which are our collars, you cut two of those and one of interfacing, so one is interfaced and the other is not. And then piece five, you cut four of these lapel pieces and two of these are interfaced and two of them are not. Okay, so the first thing, I'm gonna set these lapel pieces aside for just a minute, we don't need those quite yet. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our collar pieces right sides together And we're going to sew these together from large circle, which is the notch, this large circle right here. We're gonna go up around the whole back side and then stop again at that large circle. I have marked that. I've also marked the small circles um, as well, but I've marked all of that um, on my pieces so I can easily see. I do wanna sew with my um, interfaced side up. So I'm just going to pop some pins in here. Right there, so I know to stop there. Then. Now I have differential feed on my machine and I'm gonna leave it on for this step. But the reason I sew with the interface side up is that um, it's not going to get stretched out because it's the stable, more stable piece because it's interfaced. But um, if you didn't have a walking foot or a differential feet on your machine, this just helps to make sure that you're easing in any of the less stable fabric underneath. So it keeps things from stretching out, essentially. So it's just a good habit to be in. So again, I am going to sew from this notch up all the way around and back down. And um, then we're going to um, trim things up and then do some understitching. So let's go to the machine and do that. All right, so like I said, interface side up. I'm gonna start here at this notch, which I'm just gonna plant my needle right there. 2.5 millimeter stitch length. We're sewing at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have started and stopped right there at my points. Oh, sorry, I got a stray thread there. But I have started and stopped right there at my points. So now we are just going to um, do some trimming. So I don't want to trim too much out of this area here because we're going to need that when we put it. So I'm going to start at normal and then trim down this whole seam allowance by half. I apologize, it's kind of hard to see because I used matching thread, but um, I did, I hesitated using contrasting thread because um, she is gonna wear this and I want it to look nice. All right, and then I'm gonna start trimming it half and then to nothing by the time I get to that point so that I've got plenty of room there at that point. All right, now we are going to go and we are going to understitch. And understitching, um, just basically along this back edge, I'm not gonna worry about understitching this little part here on either side. But we are gonna take and split this open and push, this side is my facing, or my under collar because it's not interfaced. 
we're gonna push that seam allowance over to that side and I am just going to sew and just get in as tight as you can. You're not gonna be able to get all the way to the corner. And I am just going to sew really close to the fold line on the facing, or on the under, sorry, not the facing, on the under collar side, making sure that that seam allowance is pushed towards the under collar. And the under collar is the uninterfaced side. Okay, so that um, understitching is gonna give us a nice place to press. So I'm just pushing that point out. Now these are free, um, but when we press, they are gonna get pressed. That seam allowance is gonna get pressed um, in, in, but those have not been sewn all the way down. So we're gonna just turn everything right side out, and now I'm just gonna go to the ironing board and give this a good press, and we want that seam line to roll towards the under collar, which is why we understitched it. So let's go give everything a really good press on our collar, and then you can go ahead and baste this bottom closed within the seam allowance. So I'm gonna go do that, and I'll meet you back here. All right, so my collar is, um, I have basted it in the seam allowance on that side, all the way around, and then back to that side, okay? So we're gonna set that aside for just a minute. That's our front and back. <laughs> all right, so now we have four lapel pieces. Two of them are interfaced, two of them are not. We are going to be attaching one interfaced piece to one uninterfaced piece, like so, okay? And these are gonna get pressed here in just a second. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. So we're gonna take one interfaced or uninterfaced one right side up and we're gonna put an interfaced one right side together with it. And on this shorter side, we're just gonna sew down at 5 eighths of an inch and then we're gonna trim that in half and then we're gonna understitch it to the uninterfaced side or the under lapel, I guess. <laughs> um, so let's go to the machine and let's do that real quick. All right, so we are doing it on this, the shorter side. This is the unnotched side. So we're just gonna sew that seam at 5 eighths of an inch. All right, once we've sewn that, I'm now going to trim it in half, that seam allowance in half. Now I'm going to turn this this way, and we're gonna push the seam allowance towards the uninterfaced side, so we're pushing the seam allowance this way now, and we're gonna stitch really close to that seam line on the uninterfaced side. So we're stitching that seam allowance to the uninterfaced piece. Okay, once we have done that, we are going to take it, uh, both of them, to the, you know, do it with both sides, take them to the ironing board and give them a good press, wrong sides together, but don't do any basting on this side yet because we've got to sew our collar to our lapels. So let's go give them a good press and then we're going to attach our lapels to our collar. All right, so we've got our lapels and they are still open, they are just, um, been pressed and then we've got our collar. Now our collar gets worn around the body. This is the neck edge and this is the outside of the collar. But we're just gonna turn it upside down for a second. My um, interfaced side is up, okay? So this is the, the side that's gonna be out facing the public. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our collar pieces and you can see I have marked, these are the, the two dots that are on the pattern. And we're gonna pin our, um, These should match up with the dot with the dot that's here on the collar, and this dot should match up right there with the edge of there. But I'm putting the interfaced piece on top of the interfaced part of the collar. We're gonna sandwich it. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of pins in here just to hold it for a second. So we're it should match up right here along this inner edge and also right here along this cut edge. I'll do both sides with you on camera so that you can kind of see, okay? Now we're gonna take this, the uninterfaced side, and sandwich that collar in between the two pieces. Now, you have 
understitched the seam allowance to the uninterfaced side, so that is going to kind of wrap there at the edge, and that's okay. That's what we want. And I'll even put a pin there at the very edge to kind of help it go the way we want it to go. All right, now we're going to go to the machine and sew five-eighths of an inch from this edge all the way over to this edge. So let's go do that really quickly. So just as a reminder, we have interfaced lapel, collar, and then the uninterfaced lapel is sandwiching the collar in between those two layers. And we're rolling that seam allowance to the wrong side or to the uninterfaced lapel side because we understitched it and that's what it wants to do. We're sewing at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're just gonna sew all the way to the edge. Okay, so um, now that all looks good. We will trim this in half. And then I'm going to trim that corner down just a little to get some of that bulk out of there. So now when we turn things right side, I have a stray thread there. We'll get that really pretty notch right there. Okay, and then we are gonna give that a good press and then we'll baste this closed um, the rest of the way down. But let me, let's do it again on the other side just because that's a, a little bit fiddly and I wanna make sure you guys are getting it. So again, we're gonna start with our collar, whoops, upside down. And we're gonna pin our interfaced side. And this, the lapel goes past the collar, remember. The edge of the collar stops at that second dot. Those are right sides together. And now we're just gonna wrap our lapel. I'm gonna match these up first, and then we'll deal with that seam allowance. So now we're gonna sew from this side all the way off this side. Okay, that looks good. So now we are going to trim that seam allowance in half. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of that point out. So that then when we come right side out, push that point out a little bit more. Um, we have a beautiful collar piece. So now let's go to the ironing board and give this all a good press. And now you can baste the um, open edges of your lapels shut within the seam allowance. So let's do that and I will meet you back and we'll get this put on our um, bodice. Okay, so now we have our collar lapel piece and our bodice pieces that are just attached at the um, shoulder seam. So now we're gonna baste this piece um, on to our bodice piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just matching up. All right, so I'm just matching up my notches um, here. Now, I did just realize that while I lengthened, because my bodice pattern got lengthened because of, um, okay, this notch here on the collar matches up to your shoulder seam. While I did lengthen my facing, because my bodice got lengthened with my full bust adjustment, I did not lengthen the collar piece. So my collar piece is not, my lapel is not gonna go all the way into my, um, the bottom part of my dress, but I think that's gonna be fine. I'll just have a little gap. I marked center back on both my collar and my, uh, back bodice, matching that notch on the collar. And then you should have a double notch here down the front that matches up with the double notch right there. So all of that matches just fine. I'm just gonna be a little short here at the bottom. That's okay. 
that will all get caught into the facing and be just fine. But yours should go all the way to the end. <laughs> So we now have this this pinned um, all the way around. So I'm now gonna go to the machine and I'm just going to baste this um, with the collar up and we're just gonna baste this onto the bodice so that it stays in place when we put our um, facing on. So let's go to the machine and do that real quick. Okay, I'm just sewing it 3 eighths of an inch here um, just to keep everything, all these layers together. This gets very layer heavy especially when we are going to put the facing in, so. Oops, sorry. <laughs> now, while we will clip into this later, because we will want to clip into the curve, curvy parts of our neckline. Um, I'm going to wait and do that after the facing is on. I think the instructions tell you to do that now, but I'm going to wait until after my um, facing is on. Just keeping a hand under here to make sure we don't catch anything. All right. So now our collar is basted on. So let's set this aside and we are now gonna go work on our facing. All right, so we've got our, um, <clears throat> I'm a little short, it's okay. <laughs> got our collar all basted on to our bodice. Our bodice is still open at the side seams because um, we are gonna put our sleeves in. I'm gonna go out of order of the pattern a little bit for that. But this is looking so lovely, isn't it? Okay, so the next thing, we're gonna set this aside for just a minute. We don't need that right now, but we do need pieces uh, six and seven, <clears throat> which are the front facing um, that I did remember to lengthen and the um, back facing. So we need these pieces. All right, so we've got our um, facing pieces here. <clears throat> we've got, this is piece six and uh, seven, I think. <laughs> well, which is our back facing and then our two front facings. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna match up our shoulder seams. Now, we're gonna be finishing off this outside edge that goes inside the garment, so this gets sewn to the neckline. So, um, which this is also the outside edge. So this part gets sewn to the neckline. This inside curve of this piece is what gets sewn to, um, or what gets finished, and it's inside the garment. So um, <clears throat> we just want that to line up. So if that's sewn, nope. <laughs> this can get tricky. Sometimes it's tricky to determine which, so yes. Okay, so these are gonna look, because when that is sewn, that's yes, like so. Okay. So like so, so the <clears throat> inside, this is what it will look like, all sewn together. So I'm just gonna really quickly sew these together at the um, shoulder seams and then I'll come back and I'll talk about the next steps. All right, so this is all sewn um, here at the shoulder seams. I'm gonna take this to the serger but finish off your seam allowances however you'd like and I'm gonna press those towards, um, I'm actually gonna press those towards the front so that my shoulder seams are nested. Um, between the bodice and the facing. Um, but then you're going to need to finish off this edge, whether that's with a serger or bias binding or a zigzag stitch, whatever is your preference. I'm gonna use a serger, but we're just gonna serge off this or serge this whole area through here. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and then I will come back and we are going to start attaching this to our bodice. All right, so I have finished off my facing. If you can kind 
kind of see that with the serging. We are now going to sew our facing to our um, front, and I'm going to do it in a couple of different passes. So, um, the, and this won't match up because remember, this is going to get gathered. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pin the front of the facing um, to the bodice. We're going to sew that, understitch that. Then we will go back and stitch this little bit together, which is right here. And there will be a lot of gapping, remember, because we're, we're going to gather that when all is said and done. Um, but we're going to get some fancy sewing. So right now we are just doing the front edge. And we are going to match notches as we go in shoulder seams. Okay, so we are going to start, I'm going to sew with my facing up, although we're so many layers here, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> but I'm just going to start at the bottom, and we're going to sew all the way around the neckline, all the way to the other side, um, then we're going to trim, clip into our curves, understitch, and then we will do the rest of the side seam. So let's go over to the machine and get this neck edge sewn. All right, let's go all the way around the horn here. Five eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now that we have um, sewn all the way around, you do wanna check, make sure you didn't catch anything that you didn't mean to catch. No pinches or anything in the fabric, that all looks good. So I am now going to trim. So I'm going to trim my seam allowance to half of its width. You could also grade your seam allowance, which is where you cut the different layers at little different lengths, but it's up to you. You also want to be careful here that you're not cutting something you don't want to cut. <laughs> okay, once we have clipped our seam or trimmed our seam allowance down, I'm just going to go where there's a lot of curves. So up here in the um, neck edge, and I'm just going to clip into, but not through. That seam allowance about every half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. You want them to be closer together, the tighter the curve. Okay. Finally, before we go on to the next step, I am going to understitch. So we still have this is all still unsewn. This is deviating a little bit from, um, well, look, that got caught all nice and neat. <laughs> deviating a little bit from the pattern. The pattern has you sewing the side seam, or not the side seam, the um, rest of the bottom of the bodice here. But we're just going to understitch this whole collar edge. And I am pushing um, the seam allowance towards the facing, and I'm pulling the facing away from the collar bodice combination. Sewing close to that fold line on the facing side. All right. So we've done that step. Um, we're not going to press anything quite yet. So now we're going to take this long part of the <laughs> facing and we're going to match it up over here at the side seam. Your dart bolt, well, your dart bulk might not fall into that seam. Mine does because I did a full bust adjustment. So, And we are only matching it up to the point right here. And those should match one to one. Mm -hmm. 
like so, right sides together. So I'm just going to, um, I'm actually sewing with the bodice up. You can do, probably should have the facing up, but I've already got this oriented this way. <laughs> and I wanna make sure I don't sew onto my gathering stitches because we are gonna need to gather the bodice side here soon. Oops, went over that just a little bit. Okay, so we have sewn that little bit. So this area here in between the front and that little curved side, we still have a ton there, but that's okay because we're gonna gather that in, remember? So now on this side, again, we're starting at this point and we're gonna go, so we're skipping over this area. Excuse the snoring dog in the background if you can hear that. <laughs> Oh, Gidget. Can never tell what the microphone can pick up. She is sawing some logs, though. Okay. Over to this point here. And again, I'm going to sew with my um, bodice up, just so I can see my gathering stitches. I think I accidentally cut my tails off. Just to make sure I can easily get to those. Okay. All right. So now, so this little area, Again, your dark bulk probably won't go this far down unless you've also done a full bust adjustment. Okay, and I think, yeah, I think it wants me to um, try and, well, we need to clip first. I am going to clip up from this, so this is the side seam, and here's this point here. I'm gonna clip up to, get that gathering thread out of the way, up to, but not through that, where I stopped stitching. So we're just gonna clip right up into that area. I don't wanna clip my gathering stitches. Just wanna make sure that those are out of the way. Okay, and then just the same. I'm gonna clip up two, but not through that corner at that stitching line, just like so. Okay, okay. So now this little section that we did, if you can get in there, I'm actually gonna trim it down. Trim it to half of its width. The same on the other side. So just starting where we clipped into that corner. Okay, and just like with the other understitching, we're gonna push that seam allowance towards the facing and get in there as far as we can go. Okay, so again, we've got that big gap still there in the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the um, ironing board and I'm just gonna give everything a good press and press everything I mean, we still have this big open gap. That's fine. We're going to get there in just a second. Next step. But I'm just going to give everything that has been sewn a really good press and urge that um, facing 
to go inside like so and just give that collar and everything a good press. Now is also a good time if you want to add a tag to go ahead and put your tag, you want to put it in this way, but put your tag and sew that in on the facing. So I'm going to give everything a good press and then I'll be right back here. All right, so I've given everything a good press, but now we need to take care of our area here where we have a ton um, that we need to um, get this together. Okay, so actually, instead of sewing these right sides together, at this little section, we're actually going to base them together wrong sides together. So all we are going to do here is find our threads. Easier said than done. <laughs> And we're going to pull our gathering stitches so that it fits in with that facing piece. I like to pull my gathers really tight and then as I am getting them to fit, you can kind of even them out a little. Okay, so those are nice and same length now so we can pop some pins and now we are just basting this these two edges together because these are going to get caught in the um the little front panel piece okay like so and now we're just going to go to the machine and um sew within the seam allowance to base that um together so i'm going to sew it like three eighths of an inch um, right through this little area and then do that same thing on the other side and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I've got my little side panel here, these little pieces all basted together. Now, um, it's having you finish off the facing here at the side seam and sewing your side seams now, but we are going to come back to that point um, because I want to put my sleeves in first and sew that in one swoop, fell swoop. But what we're going to do um, first, just to kind of end things off. You can also go ahead and tack your facing into your seam allowances, but we are going to take right over left and match those little areas that we put wrong sides together, like so, um, and we can go ahead and baste those together now. So I'm going to baste those pieces together, and then, um, real quick, and then I will meet you back here, and we'll start in on our sleeves. Okay, so I've set my bodice aside because now we're going to do our flowers. Remember, I did my, my uh, or my flowers, our <laughs> sleeves, and I wanted my flowers going down the sleeve, like they're falling down the sleeve. So I cut mine upside down on purpose. But before we do anything with our sleeve, now is a great time to go ahead and press up your hem allowance. It's so much easier to do when, when it's flat. Um, and the pattern asks you to uh, fold up a quarter of an inch and then an inch and a quarter um, for a total of, you're losing an inch and a half, but yeah quarter and then another inch and a quarter. So I've just gone ahead and pressed that up on both sleeves and um, just given it a good press. So that's will create a memory. I haven't sewn anything down or anything, um, but when this is in the round and we're going to make the casing for the elastic, it's really easy. Um, this just kind of folds back in on itself and you don't have to press it again. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are gonna make some pleats on our sleeve. There are four pleats on um, each sleeve and you should have three marks. So we are, we are folding our pleats. Um, here, let me show you the pattern. So I just mark my notches on each. The dotted line is the fold line. It's kind of hard to see. And then the solid lines are what we are folding to. So we're taking the solid lines and bringing them into that dotted line. And we're making four pleats. So I'm just gonna go in to match that and I'm just gonna start putting some pins in here. And then in. So I folded those two lines into the center line. Now I will fold that part Oops, I just threw a pin. And then that gets folded in. And I made a V notch there for the top of my sleeve cap, just so I could differentiate it from all of my other notches. All 
All right, so we are essentially forming box pleats. And again, there should be four. All right, before we go to set this sleeve in, just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm just going to sew the whole top of the, seat, the sleeve cap basted so that those pleats are basted in place. So I'm just going to sew it like three-eighths of an inch um, across the top there where we have our pleats, and then I'll come back and we'll um, insert this into the bodice. Okay, so once we have our pleats all basted in place, now we're gonna put our sleeve in. So we're just gonna open up our bodice. Um, you know, we've got our front that's basted together, our back, we've got our elastic in. Um, and we're gonna put, let me see which side I have got here. Oh, this is perfect, the correct one. Right sides together. So I'm just gonna turn this. So here is the back part of my arm side. Here's the front. So I am just putting the right side of my sleeve cap down. And again, I marked that V notch for my top of my sleeve cap. So I'm just gonna pin in there. And then I'm gonna put a pin at my notches. And then here at the side seam. And then again over here on the front. My side seam. And at my notches. And we've got some that needs to be eased in still here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this in, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, with the sleeve against the feed dogs, and I'm going to disengage my differential feed because I want that, um, my lower feed dogs, to ease this excess in of, this, of the sleeve cap, which is the ease we need for the shape of the sleeve cap, um, but have my machine do that for me. So let's go to the machine and um, we'll do that. Okay, so I have disengaged my uh, differential feed. So now my uh, the bottom layer will be fed through a little faster than the top layer, which is what I want. I'm sewing with the um, sleeve against the feed dogs. And you're pretty much one-to-one -one through your, from the side seam to, oopsie, sorry. From the side seam up to that first notch. But I'm sticking my hand in between the layers, there's my fingers, and I'm just pulling that sleeve back to where my um, cut edges are even. Also trying to keep everything on the table here because that really helps so that I'm not catching any pleats or uh, pinches or puckers, unintentional ones, <laughs> obviously. We have the pleats at the top that we want. All right, now we're to the pleats. So this is where the basting came in handy. Once you get to the top of the shoulder, you can readjust. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a look, make sure my pleats are all going the way I want them to. Sorry, I'm out of focus here. Oops. All right, and everything looks really good. So I will now go and serge this seam. Um, I'll sew in my other sleeve and then serge that seam and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so we've got both sleeves in now. So again, this was a uh, deviation from the pattern. So now we're gonna go back to step 25 or 24 and 25 and sew our side seams um, and finish off the facing there at the side seam. But we're gonna go ahead and do our um, sleeve underarm seams at the same time as our side seam. So what we're gonna do, this is our shirt with the wrong sides together. We're gonna flip it over so that we are right sides together here. Um, also at this point, go ahead and un- fold your um, hem of your sleeve that you pressed. And we're just gonna match, your crease lines should match up. 
If they don't, it's fine. You can repress those <laughs> again. But uh, trust me, this makes it so much easier. And then we're going to match our underarm seams. I like to push my seam allowances towards the sleeve. And then we've got our side seam. So we have our side seam and then we've got our facing here. We're gonna match the fold of the side seam, this hem here or the where we sewed our facing. It should line up with the edge of the back. And we are going to take our facing and wrap it around to the back like so. Okay, so there's our side seam. Um, this is our front, here's our back. And we just took that facing and we've wrapped it around to the back. So the back is sandwiched between the facing and the front. And uh, the seam allowance here where the facing and the front are attached goes around towards the back um, with the facing because that was understitched, if you remember. And now we are going to sew, and I'm actually gonna sew with the back up just to keep everything. So from the base of the shirt, 5 eighths of an inch, and we're gonna sew all the way up and all the way to the end of our sleeve. And um, yeah, then we'll serge it and uh, be done. So let's go over to the sewing machine and do that. All right. Let's sew our side seam. So I've got my facing and uh, the back up. Kind of have a lot of bulk here, so we're just gonna go slow. And I'm sewing these at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then when I hit my sh gonna pivot and there we go now I'm going to surge starting from the bottom and surge all the way up and I'll just tie off my um, actually you don't need to tie it off because it's going to get caught up in the um, facing when we turn this right side out the instructions want you to clip so you can press the seam allowance open I am not going to do that <laughs> That seems like a lot of um, weakening of a seam that doesn't need to happen. So I'm just going to surge this entire um, seam allowance and just press it towards the front because that's the way it's going to want to go with the facing um, sewn in. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side and then I'm going to surge and um, press everything towards the front and I'll meet you back here. All right, so once I pressed my um, seams to the front, all of this just folded right back in place, which is so easy. That's why I like to do that when it's on uh, flat. It's much easier to sew that in. So I'm just going to put this on the machine, and we are going to sew um, all sew this casing down, basically, and I'm going to leave about a two and a half inch gap um, there to thread in our elastic. So let's really quickly go over and um, sew our casing down, and then we'll thread the, our elastic through, and then close that hole up, and then our bodice essentially will be finished. Um, we have one more step before we stop for today. So um, let's get this elastic in. Okay, so I have my sleeve um, right side out and I'm gonna sew inside the, um, inside the sleeve. So I've got the uh, hem up and I do have my dif differential feed back engaged. That's gonna make sewing this little area so much better. So I'm just going all the way around the sleeve and then I'm gonna stop giving myself about, oh, a two to two and a half inch gap. Okay. So I've got a little gap there, but we've sewn the rest of the casing down. Now you're gonna take um, piece 10, which is your elastic guide for your sleeve. Um, and this is the one inch wide elastic. And I'm going to use this very high-tech tool again, my <laughs> safety pin. And we are just going to, where did my hole go? Feed it through the hole. There it is. <laughs> and go all the way around. Trim that thread real quick. Okay. 
Now when I get to just a little bit of a tail left, I'm gonna pop a pin just so I don't accidentally pull my elastic all the way through. Okay, once you've got your elastic threaded all the way through, we wanna make sure that nothing is twisted. Nothing is worse than getting your elastic sewn in and then realizing it was twisted. Um, I think we're good. I think that's flat. And that's flat. And we are going to overlap our ends like so. And then sew some stitching. Keep those nice and secure. I've overlapped those about, I don't know, about an inch. Okay, and once you've got those attached, you can whoop, <laughs> stretch it out and pull that in there. So we will sort out our gathers here in just a second, but now I wanna sew up the rest of this hole. So I'm just gonna pull this flat and start right where I left off. And sew that case shut. And now you can move your gathers around your elastic, but now we've got the elastic in our sleeves. And I think when she, uh, the model wears it, she even tucks that elastic up to give kind of a bubble sleeve effect. But you know, you can wear it however you want. All right, um, our final step, let's go back um, overhead and we are gonna use piece eight to get our little um, front panel piece in. All right, now our final little piece for today is gonna to be putting the piece eight, which is our front band, um, sewing that, the front band and the front band facing onto the um, top of the bodice. So the first thing we are going to do is both pieces need a 5 eighths inch narrow hem. So basically 5 eighths or quarter inch, 3 eighths, um, fold over. So I'm just going to go, I'm honestly going to go to the ironing board, press over five eighths, then turn it in on itself and press it again um, on both sides really quickly. And then we're going to edge stitch those down and I will be right back. Okay. So both of our piece eights, um, I have folded it over five eighths of an inch, pressed it, and then folded that over um, under on itself so that we just have two narrow hems on the short ends of both of those pieces, okay? Um, it doesn't really matter, both of these are interface, so it doesn't matter which one is your um, facing and which one is your outside, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one of the long sides to um, the front here of our top. These should all match up. And I'm gonna sew this first one. Oh, we have so many seam, so much bulk here. So the first one at just three eighths of an inch seam allowance, because then we're basically basting it in place. And I'm gonna sew with this piece up, okay? So I'm gonna just sew this down at three eighths of an inch, um, and it's all that bulk, and then we're gonna sandwich this one on the other side. So let's do this one first, and then I'll come back and we'll do the other. Okay, so I have the first one just kind of basted in place, so you can see the stitching, uh, basting stitches there, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna take this other one, so right side to wrong side, or the right side of the facing, and we're gonna line, match those up, and now we are gonna sew it at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. There's so much bulk. We'll be trimming a lot of this bulk out. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna sew at 5 eighths of an inch all the way across. That will catch all of my lines of stitching in. And then um, I'll come back and we will trim our seam allowance, press things down and do a little edge stitching. Okay, we've got a lot of bulk to cut out. So we have um, a bodice front piece there. Got a lot of fluff here we need to get rid of. Um, also, we can remove our gathering basting stitches, um, but we got a lot of bulk. So we've got the bodice sandwiched in between these two pieces. So now we're going to trim our seam allowance down half. And then I'm going to go to the ironing board and press both of these down really well. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so I've given that a really good press um, and now I'm just gonna go to the mach machine and edge stitch this down. So my facing is pressed down, the front's pressed down. Now I don't have anything pressed or finished on this bottom end that's gonna get attached to the skirt, but um, yeah, we've got everything looking pretty good um, at this point. So I'm just gonna edge stitch this down really quickly and then I'll come back and we'll stop for the day. Okay, so we are ready to stop for today. So I have edge stitched this little piece down. Um, it's not my favorite finishing. I don't like how the sides aren't really finished there, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so next time we will attach the bottom of the skirt to this. So our channel in, so then our ribbons have a place or your fabric strips, whatever you've chosen, have a place to go. But you should have a finished bodice at this point, which is very exciting. Um, as always, leave any questions you have down below and I will see you next week and we will work on our skirt and then get them attached.